Welcome back to episode 4 of Laser Around the UK 3, where our shrink in the drink hits his new top speed, we reveal the truth about how he broke his dagger board, and he's back on the radio. It's day 2 and he leaves in great conditions from Hailing Island, and he reaches a top speed of 8.38 knots on his tracker. He makes it all the way to Shoreham by sea, and this time no capsizing. Here we are at Worthing, still making excellent progress on the run, reasonably breezy, managed to have a wee which was quite complicated, but I dare not eat my sandwich for fear of losing the Tupperware. In episode 3 I told you that running aground at Hailing Island caused his dagger board to break. This turned out to be disinformation. He actually fell backwards off his boat, causing himself and the boat some damage. I've used this banana ripeness index to give you an indication of the wounds to the shrink, somewhere between a six and a seven. There is a simple sea proverb that says, always remember, the ocean will be there tomorrow, but you may not. With that in mind, he takes a couple of days off to let the strong winds pass, and he meets the petivers in Brighton. Uh, I think we need to have a sweepstake to see when and we'll see the first seal. Great idea, Andrew Petifer. To help you the guesses, I've added a map of the seal population density around the UK. To enter, leave your date and time prediction in the comments below. The prize will be a custom t-shirt designed by David Hockney. Closer to the summer, we'll also run a sweepstake for orca sightings around Scotland. It should be noted he's already seen a dolphin. This kind of support at the end of a long day of sailing makes a massive difference for Andrew, and it's great to see the sailing community gather around somebody that's completely bonkers. So what's this snack you've got, Andrew? I've got cross bun with marmalade from Louise, which is going in my snack box. Louise, tell us about this snack. That is the ultimate sailing snack when you need a bit of that oomph, that will do it. The American tourists that helped him with his boat up Canvas Sand had mixed reviews of his journey. Oh, thanks so much for your help. Sorry, thank you. You're the best thing we found on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks, guys. This divergence of perception of Andrew's journey is also mirrored by YouTube's algorithm, which thinks that only men over 45 years old subscribe to the channel. Leaving Rye, Andrew encounters his first military zone, which is Lud firing range. He's also met with tides and a headwind, so he has to do lots of tacking. My friends from the military have come to shoo me off the land. Much better progress in the afternoon but being further away from land makes it harder to navigate. Sam Holm Sailing, who is one of YouTube's biggest sailing vloggers and all around nice guy, recently subscribed to the channel and even commented calling the journey mad. But what is even crazier is that when Andrew was making his way up the channel, Sam Holm Sailing was actually coming down in the opposite direction. I reached out like any normal clout chasing content creator would in the off chance that he would want to meet Andrew in the middle of the channel. He was already long gone down to the Channel Islands Maybe let's schedule a meet-up for four months' time in Cornwall. These guys are doing an amazing job moving Hythe Shingle back up the beach against the normal flow of the southwesterly swell. The sixth day of sailing and Andrew could have walked to Folkestone faster than he sailed because the wind's against him. The afternoon blesses him with the white cliffs of Dover and more favourable winds gets all the way to deal with South Down Sailing Club. Day seven, in great winds. Andrew refuses to stop at any town that ends in gate, makes it all the way to Whitstable for the weekend. There was a man who went to sea, he went to sea in a little dinghy to sail around the British Isle, something like a thousand miles. Now, first of all, to the shrink in the drink. How far into the Thames estuary are you going before you head north again? Well, I haven't actually worked it out. Um... <laughs> I wonder when I should back up and start going the other way. And you see Absolutely. a large big wheel, Andrew, a large big wheel. That probably <laughs> means you've gone a little bit too far into the centre of London. <laughs> Absolutely. Gosh, if I see a wheel, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well yeah, done. It on, the... on the wind and the tides and stuff like that. And it's very muddy north of the Thames. Not many places to land. Oh, blimey. So hopefully no more capsides. Well, look, we'll, we'll check in with you periodically, if we may. Don't forget to enter the sweepstake for your chance to win a David Hockney t-shirt. If you haven't seen episodes one to three, click here.